Right, welcome back. Third video in this flight. First was setting up, second one was taking off and heading out over the Bay of Biscay. Third one, we are now over the south of Spain and we're down from 1400 pounds per tank to six, so it's taken about two hours. It's uh, 407, I think we probably took off or started about 12, so we've been going about four hours and uh, we've got plenty of fuel and we're just coming up to the top of the descent or TOD so the way I've organized things let me just zoom in on these for you this is the last part of the uh, flight plan uh, MAR which is a VOR in Spain and LXGP is Gibraltar and you can see we're about uh, 57 miles away so we should be about 18,000 feet so I'm descending to 3 so 21, 24 we're a bit late on the descent so what I'm going to do is just set up the descent. So first thing you do is bring the throttles back a bit because uh, we don't want to overspeed. And then we clear ourselves down to a lower altitude, which can be anything at this point. Flight level 161. And we start the descent. And we want to be going down about uh, 1500 feet a minute. And I'll do altitude select so that we level off. And I'm going to carry on down to about 3000 feet here. Which is what I want to um, line up for the runway at Gibraltar at 3000 feet. We're still flying the route so you can see we've just turned onto the final leg which is direct to Gibraltar. Um, what I did was the I put in a direct to MAR and that's the waypoint we've just overflown and the reason why I put that in was because I then had a countdown clock uh, which would tell me um, how long before I needed to start the top of the descent so I did a direct MAR. There are two MARs that this was I think first time I can remember where I've actually um, had to say no not the nearest MAR the the other one the one in Spain so anyway so that's just been uh, useful for me to have a distance and estimated time on route to the top of the descent but we're still uh, navigating on this one so this is taking us uh, direct to GB and as I say we want to get down to 50 let's say we've got about 50 miles so we can lose about 15,000 feet in 50 miles so because 5 times 3 is 15 and we need to get down to 3,000 so we can be at about 18,000 so we're, we're a bit high we may need to uh, slow our descent in terms of forward speed or increase our descent in terms of um, feet per minute so there's the southern coast of Spain. The temperature was uh, minus 40 over the GB and it's now minus 30 so it's at least 10 degrees higher at the same altitude although it will be coming up as we descend of course. You can see there the cabin uh, starting to pressurize at the rate of uh, 300 feet a minute. We want about 500 feet a minute, don't we? Let's go down here and see if we. What's it doing? Is it doing about 500? It's doing about 500, isn't it? It's difficult to adjust because unless it's actually pressurising, it's uh, difficult to say exactly what it's doing. Now. What are we going to do about landing in Gibraltar? I presume that's the peninsula with um, Gibraltar on the end. What I've done is I've got some approach plates. So let's have a quick look at those. Here's the uh, various approaches. It depends on whether uh, Gibraltar has an east-west runway. So if we're going to come in from the east then we go to Alpha and then we uh, go in and uh, about 10 miles out we turn left and go in or if we're going to go in to the uh, on the westerly approach on the, on the easterly approach rather from the west on the easterly approach then we we have this big prohibited area to fly around so um, 
so we have to go Charlie Bravo and then and then sort of sneak in and do a quick right hand turn um, this is because the Spanish are a bit anal about Gibraltar and uh, put um, put their territorial limits above um, safety in terms of aircraft <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to try and come in uh, from the east if I can and the way we're going to do that is uh, here I'm going to get a uh, it says as directed by radar and all approaches into Gibraltar are radar approaches now I'm not going to have the benefit of radar so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial in the Gibraltar uh, VOR the 113 decimal 6 rather cheekily named uh, GBR VOR and uh, set myself up at uh, on, on a bearing of uh, 0 eight nine degrees from it heading 271 so we'll, we'll pretty well be going straight into the runway we're going to do a visual approach so I want to be about 10 miles to the east of the runway and uh, at 3,000 feet and um, it's at sea level obviously and uh, then I'll um, just arrange I'll, I'll come in down the radial on the VOR so as far as the uh, frequency of the ILS. I wonder if they've got an ILS frequency. Perhaps I'll get that off the. Uh, I'll get it off the uh, flight simulator. There we go. I do love this scenery. For considering this is the default scenery, I think this is really excellent. So, um, what do we say the uh, VOR was 113 decimal 6? Let's just go to um, location, have a look at the local map. There's Gibraltar, it's a, it's a TACAN, which is a military uh, VOR, and there's no ILS, from what I can see. There's the runway there and this is the tack end, so the tack end's on the mountain so we'll just have to make sure that we fly fly to the right of it so 113 decimal 6 so let's go get the radio up and we'll go to we want it on uh, the VHF 113 decimal 6 so we move the big digits up 2 and the small digits up to 6 and then swap it over Right, so then that should set us up. Now, um, what I want to do is start navigating using the VOR straight away. So I'm going to go off of the GPS. Um, so uh, I'm going to um, steer it on the heading. So as I s said before, um, we want to sort of take control of the plane, start steering it manually. So the first thing you do is push this to line the heading bug up and then you press heading and now we're no longer steering uh, the GPS route, we're just flying the heading bug. And I'm going to turn the heading bug uh, slightly to the left because we want to fly out. So we're going to be coming out and then and round, round this way. Now, um, assuming that we've lost the altitude, which we should, I think we should have done. Let's just... Um, the power off a bit. Now uh, we want to switch over from GPS to flying on the VOR so I'm going to click, we can either click this or, or this, you remember on the, so I'm going to click this and this will pick up the VOR so you can see the displays change now on the VOR and um, if we zoom in we want to uh, set this up to um, 270 271 or whatever it is and that's the course so let's set that up 271 good so that's the direction of the runway and we want to be about 10 miles away from it so we're about 26 miles away from it at the moment and, and closing and we're closing at nearly 300 knots so uh, let's um, again let's just pull the power back a bit because we're about to go below 10,000 so let's um, pop the old landing lights on and pull the speed down so that we're going less than <coughs> 250 knots over the ground 
there's Africa maybe where we're going to fly next I want to go somewhere nice and warm let's uh, perhaps Gambia might be a nice place to fly we'll visit all the old British colonies so now what what instrument are we looking at now what are we what should we be concentrating on obviously we're concentrating on height we're concentrating on speed and everything like that and in fact the most um, interesting thing at the moment here is this is the the actual um, the distance because we want to be on this radial and we want to be about uh, 10 miles so we're on the 130 radial and we are 20 miles away so it depends what we intercept first isn't it if we intercept 10 miles first then we'll need to turn left to stay away from it until we intercept the um, the 090 radial if we uh, if we intercept the 090 first then uh, we'll want to turn towards the runway until we get down to 10 miles so all, all will become apparent I think in due course going to pull the talk back even more because um, it's getting uh, we're getting there quicker aren't we quicker than we thought so what's the uh, the, the uh, Q and H is uh, 2997 so it's probably a bit early to be putting this in but I'll, I'll just put that in because now we know we're on uh, sea level and that we'll, we'll level off at 3000 feet above sea level So we're 17 miles away and we've got 116. And we're doing about 225 over the ground. We're doing less than 200. If we go up to the top here, you can see that our maximum um, approach flap is 200 knots. I don't know, can you read that? There we are. So maximum approach flap 200. So we can put a flap down at 200. We can put the uh, second stage of flap down at 157, which is the white white um, uh, zone on the airspeed indicator. And the maximum manoeuvring is 181. So 181 knots is is probably a nice speed to be uh, doing the approach. And in fact, that's what we're doing. And uh, what I'll do is I will just put one stage of flaps down. So here's the flaps going down. One stage, and there you can see the flap indicator. We've got approach flaps. Now we're down at uh, about 13 miles at 99 so which one of those is going to come up first do you think 90 or, or 10 about five minutes out aren't we we're still at 7,000 feet though so we've still got a we've still got quite a bit of uh, altitude to lose with the flaps down you can see we've lost quite a bit of speed haven't we so that's just a testament to the amount of drag that's on board So 94, 11.7, looks like we're going to hit the point exactly, doesn't it? That was a complete uh, fluke. Now remember that beep tells us that we need to find the props. So let's F4, puts the props forwards. and we've got 89 so we're going to be turning right so I'm going to do it on the bug let's turn right so we're more than 10 miles away so we can turn towards the runway now uh, the, 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 turn towards the fix the final approach fix but we're still too high we're at 5400 um, we're about over the fix right now and we're still we're 2000 feet too high and we said about 3000 didn't we so um, 
I think that was just a little bit of um, delay in my part in setting up the recording. This is certainly looking, looking correct because, um, unless I'm much mistaken, Gibraltar's over there. So let's cut the throttle, put down the second stage flaps because we want all the drag we can get. stall the plane. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Nearly caused an international incident there. Mediterranean still has a mill pond, isn't it? Now we've got a wind of uh, 15 knots, if you look in the top left, of, uh, at about uh, 310 degrees, so that's going to be pretty much on the right hand side as we come in. There's the bay that uh, we have to avoid, and you can see that if we'd done the, done this on the other side, we'd be in big trouble, wouldn't we? There seems to be some sort of ship in the harbour or in the bay. Now I'm going to put the gear down. And we're just doing a quick, quick bum fix check, so brakes are off. Undercarriage is down and locked. Fuel mixture rich, which is basically the propellers are fine. The uh, fuel is on and sufficient for a go around. The flaps are set correctly, and uh, hatches and harnesses are fine. And we can see the runway. Yep, that looks like a destroyer. Or oh, there's a destroyer either side. It's turbulent, and this one thing this rock is renowned for is turbulence. Um, especially if the wind's blowing from the south. It's coming from the north today, so it's not so bad. I'm just going to throttle up a bit because I'm a bit petrified about stalling this plane. There we are. That's pretty well on the centre line. We are too high. So I'm going to pull the power off and pop my nose down a bit. Don't forget turbines lag. So you put the power on before you throw in, in anticipation of needing it, yeah? That water's lovely, isn't it? Right, now we're... Um, you can see how the wind's taken us, isn't it? South of the runway. It's blowing us south. If we do a go around, we're going to need to turn sharp left on the way out again. I'm cramming in, which basically means I'm flying slightly to the right to compensate for the fact that the wind is blowing me to the left. But I'm coming in, uh, coming in okay. The way, the reason why you crab in, there are two ways of coming in. One is is crabbing in, which is, uh, or the the other way is um, flying with cross controls and. Uh, we'll, perhaps we'll go over that another time, but um, there's a road that goes across this runway and they stop the traffic when a plane lands. They're certainly going to stop it if I crash. Now the idea behind crabbing in is that you it um, doesn't matter what uh, your wheels are like relative to the ground until you actually touch down and when you touch down you 
what you do is you um, at the last minute sort of swing the plane straight. So that's the last minute. So we'll swing the plane straight. Touch down. Oh, a couple of times. Flaps up. Brakes. And exit left. Well, 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 well. Welcome to Gibraltar. stop excellent now I won't go through the shutdown checklist because I haven't really got it worked out yet but um, that went pretty well uh, it was a pretty uh, turbulent landing wasn't it we did bounce on the approach so uh, I'm not too worried about that so now it's just a case of um, turning everything off the beacon blah 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 avionics off and uh, off with the fuel. Oh, on with the parking brake <laughs> before I run over the guy with the Texaco tanker. Off with the batteries and the generators. Lovely. Well, thanks for joining me on the flight. And uh, I think Gambia. I like Gambia. I'm fan the idea of going to Gambia. I might go on a tour of Africa. Go and see the pyramids or something. So, um, uh, yeah. So, thanks for joining me on the flight. And uh, hopefully see you next time.